Hello and welcome to the show which, out of respect to calls this week for stricter impartiality in broadcasting, will be taking the utmost care to be openly offensive to everyone. <laughs> so, at the party conference in Bournemouth, after Kenneth Baker offers himself as the next Tory leader, Mrs Thatcher announces a sudden cabinet reshuffle. <laughs> while another prospective candidate, Geoffrey Howe, relaxes before an important fringe meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and inside the hall, a special new podium is installed where the lectern automatically adjusts itself to the height of the next speaker. Worries are expressed that it could disappear altogether when it's Colin Moynihan's turn. <laughs> Yes, when it comes to topical satire, this programme stops at nothing. And uh, talking of nothing, our panellists this week, on my right, our first team captain, the man responsible for making Private Eye magazine what it is today, 70p. <laughs> Ian Hislop. And uh, with Ian, you've seen him on Saturday Night at the Movies, you've seen him on Whose Line Is It Anyway? Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to see him again. It's Tony Slattery. <laughs> On my left, our resident captain, although quite why he chooses to live in this studio, I have no idea, uh, Paul Merton. And with Paul, of course, you may have noticed that uh, his guest is not, as advertised, the Right Honourable Roy Hattersley. Sadly, he had to pull out at the last minute, but at least it saves us the bother of putting windscreen wipers on the cameras. <laughs> Instead, uh, we have a journalist and author who has written books on such diverse subjects as Adolf Hitler, the Falklands War and germ warfare. He'll do anything for a laugh. <laughs> the Sunday Times journalist Robert Harris. career recklessly into the first round, in which we show you footage of some of the major news stories this week. Uh, Ian and Tony, uh, what is this man displaying brazenly and why? Um, um, it's, it's to do with Ivana Trump. It looks like the world's most expensive diaphragm. <laughs> <laughs> Is that anywhere near? No. No, no it's, it a, it's, um, it's, uh, It says Eku on the coin. Yes, I'll give you uh, two points for being able to read. <laughs> um, it's the new 1,000 Eku coin, in uh. fact. Of course, uh, the advantages of the Eku coin are that it standardises fiscal fluctuations, it facilitates cross-border transactions, and if you get peckish, you can peel back the gold foil and eat the chocolate inside. <laughs> uh, Paul and Robert, uh, no points for identifying this man, but uh, what, what's he been up to this week? Um... Visiting what's left of Kuwait. <laughs> this is the Kuwait Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> so that, he has a soft spot for President Bush. This is it. <laughs> yes, I think you can have full marks for that. It's, uh, it's our friend Saddam visiting Kuwait or the southern provinces of Iraq, as he prefers to call them, and showing his anger at the deployment of American troops on Arab soil by ruthlessly standing in a hole. <laughs> Angus, uh, sorry, uh, do, do we get an extra point for pointing out that Saddam Hussein was once a member of village people? <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, no, you don't. Um, and he's the new... Points at all. He, in fact, he, I might dock you one for saying... Isn't he, the, isn't he the new man in Deirdre Barlow's life? <laughs> No, that's Roy Hattersley. <laughs> Good. Well, this will bring down the Thatcher government, won't it? <laughs> well, uh, Ian and Tony, then, what on earth, or rather, what in space, is going on here? Ah, oh, um, it's a Woody Allen film. It's, uh, it's a piece of complicated uh, machinery. So, oh, it's uh, something to do with space, then? Oh, it's the Hubble telescope. It's actually working for the first time ever. That's news. <laughs> are, well, it are, isn't, it isn't. Are they using it to try and correct Patrick Moore's squint? <laughs> yes, well, you got it right. It is the Hubble telescope, but in fact it's not, it's not working. Um, no, it's not working. No, oh, no, he was uh, being ironical. We meant it wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was being wrong, I think. <laughs> it's made almost entirely in, in America, but it's uh, started to wobble uncontrollably, uh, thanks to the one part that was made in Britain. <laughs> which is namely the, uh, the heat shield, so the Hubble telescope built by Americans, used by Europeans, buggered up by the British. <laughs> yeah, finally, in this round, Paul and Robert, uh, what in Bournemouth is going on here? 
What happens to these lunches arriving? <laughs> <laughs> this is the, uh, this is, uh, who says the government doesn't invest in the railways? <laughs> this is the uh, new high-speed rail link to the uh, channel. Yes, it was Mrs Thatcher uh, reaffirming the Conservatives' commitment to public transport after a huge cash injection for British Rail was announced by Transport Secretary uh, Cecil Parkinson. Although why he should be put in charge of trains is beyond me. He's hardly known for pulling out on time, is he? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, which, uh, frighteningly topical observation brings us to the end of this first round. And, uh, well, Paul and Robert have a succulent five, and Ian and Tony a putrid four. Well, now I have to lead you into the grimy world of tabloid headlines, one each for you to identify. Uh, Paul, what vital news story of the week does this refer to? Scotty the busman bungled my snip-off. <laughs> um, there's these, uh, there's, two, there's two blokes talking in the pub, and <laughs> one says I, I have to wait um, three years for my vasectomy operation, and Scotty the busman said, well, I, I'll do it for you. Um, <laughs> All I need is um, a tub of cold cream and, <laughs> and a billiard cue. <laughs> and a good run-up. <laughs> and the, the guy got spread-eagled on the um, snooker table and he potted a red. Did he make that up? No, I read about it. It's actually... <laughs> well, you're not far off, that's why I was asking. It is, in fact, uh, yes, a bus conductor called Scotty Warner who decided to supplement his income by carrying out circumcisions. <laughs> <laughs> the way you do. A cut in pay. Mm. Yes. Can yeah. I just say, oh. cut me up, Scotty, at this point? <laughs> no. No, you can't. He advertised... <laughs> he advertised Good. on Prestel with the words circumcision and body piercing personally done by Scotty. And incredibly, someone actually took him up on the offer and suffered the inevitable and rather painful consequences. Uh, apparently, the patient's in such a bad way, he's now seeing a specialist. That's Sid, who's a ticket inspector. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, you can have one point, because you were terribly close. Uh, Robert, a slightly less important story for you. The day America was shut. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, this is serious, boring story. Is that a misprint, that last word? Yes. <laughs> 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 No, it's not the day America was shot. Yes. <laughs> it, refers, it refers to the um, budget deficit in America and um, President Bush refusing in the election saying, read my lips, no mm -hmm. new taxes. T turned out he wasn't speaking through his lips. It's <laughs> um, a bit rude, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't get that from Roy Hasley. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. yes. Uh, and anyway, they've had to close the Statue of Liberty and so on because they haven't got enough money. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, the threat to close all America managed to win round some of his opponents, but what actually clinched it was when he threatened to resign, proving that there are two words that Americans fear most. President Quayle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tony, uh, what is this blathering on about? How they took the news from Mars to Ghent. This is about um, uh, uh, UFO sightings in Belgium. Mm. Um, and, and how surprised people were that Belgium was chosen because... It's the first interesting thing that's ever <laughs> happened in Belgium. <laughs> that's right. Yes, absolutely right. Yes, 2000... They're triangular-shaped things in the sky. Mm. The Toblerones, I think they were. <laughs> I Ian's on drugs, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Well, so is the whole of Belgium. <laughs> 2,600 Belgians have reported seeing a giant illuminated pyramid in the sky. The Air Force even scrambled two F-16 fighters, whereupon it accelerated off into space. Ian, don't ring us. Ah, this is Tony's agent again. Um... How... <laughs> How dare you? No, this is um, British Telecom. No, you were right first. <laughs> <laughs> is Tragically. he on the telephone? I hope you're watching. Exactly. Yes, it is British, British Telecom. Telecom having announced profits of uh, three billion pounds put up their prices last year. For some unknown reason, this made them a bit unpopular. <laughs> so this year, they've capped it by charging for director inquiries. Which is going to make them even more unpopular. Aren't, ladies and gentlemen, aren't British Telecom bastards? <laughs> <laughs> That, that
that was Tony's impression of the Tory party conference. <laughs> <laughs> Telecom are also going to change the 999 emergency number to bring it in line with Europe, where they dial 911. In the past, apparently, if ever a foreigner was mugged over here, they would stagger bleeding into the nearest phone box, dial their emergency number, and get the latest test match score. <laughs> <laughs> Because if you were Belgian, you'd be quite interested. In it. <laughs> and uh, at the end of that round, uh, the score is well, Paul and Robert have a nourishing nine, and Ian and Tony have a rather limp eight. God, relentlessly on to round three now, <laughs> where each team gets a seemingly unconnected selection of visual and musical clues which relate to a certain story of the week. They, with consummate ease, identify which story, as Ian and Tony will now demonstrate. Uh, um, Dallas the... Dallas? Oh, yes. Victoria Principal. Victoria Principal. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Oh, no, this is Fer Fergie's party. Um, that's the country. Saddam Hussein dancing. <laughs> that's, um... There's Fergie. There's Fergie again. There's me! Yes, that's right. And... There's and... Fergie again! Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. No, that's, that's, that's all to do with the, with the Dallas-style vulgarity of her party. Yes, that, isn't it? yeah, absolutely right. Fergie and Andrew's £60,000 party at South York. Uh, where does the hippo fit in? Uh, the hippo fits in because he was one of the celebrity guests. It was yeah. a choice between the hippo and Gareth Hunt. <laughs> I think I would have chosen the hippo, yeah. <laughs> uh, completely wrong. It was, in fact, uh, a jungle theme. Um, there was a last-minute panic when the marquee didn't arrive, but fortunately they were able to cut down one of Fergie's old dresses and, uh, <laughs> and peg it out in the back garden. <laughs> Come on, Robert, uh, here's your vile concoction. Um, Mrs. Thatcher? Yeah, <laughs> celebrating interest rate cuts. Um, Roy Hatterson? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gloria Hattersley again. <laughs> uh, and uh, Gloria Mr. Hunter again. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, yes. Almost entirely wrong. Yes. This is, um, th this is the injections. Yes, she had an operation or something. Or oh, an injection lip. into her lips to sort of make her lips fatter. She could have, she could have got Sean Penn to punch her, I suppose. <laughs> 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 And it's an extract from cows or something like that. Yes. Cow's uterus. Yes, yes, that's worth two points. Uh, it's a reference to Madonna who's had 24 injections of cow's hormones into her lips to make her look more like Marilyn Monroe. That's Marilyn Monroe, the famous Frisian short film. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when you next see Madonna, you'll know it's not high energy dancing, it's actually BSE. <laughs> well, uh, it's time now for our almost popular archive round. <laughs> Uh, Ian and Tony, we're going to show you a piece of film and then in the time on a tradition ask you to tell us what happened next. This is what it's like being on the campaign trail with the Prime Minister in 1983. It's as far removed from traditional campaigning as it's possible to imagine. Well, there's some very obscure journalist there. <laughs> um, some you bloke bastard. <laughs> Dude. Yes, oh, I know what happened to this chap. He, um, he got short-sighted and then he had to wear glasses. Yeah, right. <laughs> I yes. remember this clip. Mrs Thatcher is in the background, just hanging around, and um, the journalist in the front is doing a very serious piece about what it's like following Mrs Thatcher on the trail. And, in fact, she's following him. Well, that seems a pretty full answer. Let's see if you're right. This is what it's like being on the campaign trail with the Prime Minister in 1983. It's as far removed from traditional campaigning as it's possible to imagine. There aren't many voters in sight, or there are hundreds of members of the media who swarm around the Prime Minister to follow her every move, and the idea from the Conservatives' point of view is to get the best possible exposure on the TV news that evening. <laughs> So, so that's what I get for coming on in place of Roy Hatterson. <laughs> well, you should have seen what we were going to show of Roy. <laughs> Paul and Robert, who is this person? Now, I'll give you a clue. This film is 22 years old. Oh, I've no particular qualifications to be an MP. Uh, there are no special qualifications for being an MP. I have the faintest idea what to do in the house. So that's something one has to learn, I presume, as one goes on. I've got very, very, many friends in the House, and I've been to the House on many occasions and listened to debates, but uh, I can't pretend to be other than completely ignorant about procedure. 
This is uh, David Whitlash Waddington, the <laughs> Home Secretary, <laughs> whose uh, solution to uh, prison overcrowding is to hang uh, as many inmates as possible. <laughs> well, let's just see. Thank you. Well, goodbye then. Well, just another person calling. The telephone has never stopped ringing all morning. <laughs> <laughs> He's yes, taken over directory inquiries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. It was David Bonington, absolutely right. Two points, well, a lovely spontaneous voice, moment that we captured there. So at the end of that round, uh, Paul and Robert uh, have an embarrassingly large 13, and uh, Ian and Tony a small but perfectly formed 12. We should do, but we don't. Time now for our odd one out round in which we show each of you four famous faces. Three of them will have something in common. You have to tell us what makes the other one the outcast. Paul and Robert, uh, Princess Anne, Mark Phillips, no connection there obviously. <laughs> Prince Michael of Kent and Nigel Mansell. Uh, Nigel Mansell. Uh, he's the only one who can't get his car to go above 100 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and wasn't Prince, Prince Michael Kent at some road safety awards this Very week? Very good, you're going for, for three points here. Yes. Oh, no, they're not. He'd, he'd done a hundred and... <laughs> yes, they're streaking ahead. This story was in Private Eye, which is where Robert read it. How very irritating that he gets a point for it. <laughs> yes, he was, he was done the other day just before arriving as the guest of honour at a road safety conference. Uh, Ian and Tony, Robert Maxwell. Oh, yes. Princess My Michael of Kent. Cliff Richard, and, well, and I'll give you an extra Yeti. point if you, if you can tell me who this is, in fact. That's well, not Frank Boff after a heavy session. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to say, no, it isn't. It's, it's interesting, because I think this is a libel collection, uh, which Tony is going to get very, very good at. <laughs> no. it's, uh, uh, this it's man a... is Sir Ranulph Twistleton Twit. Yes, to give him an abbreviated Or Thistleton title. Twine. Uh, Twistleton Wickham Fines. Twistleton Wickham Fines. Words you're looking for. And he's a polar explorer. He is. And uh, he recently got a ridiculous amount of money in the courts for a magazine suggesting that his expeditions were not of historic or scientific merit, which of course they are. <laughs> Just make that clear. <laughs> um, no the... one's going to disagree with it. The large one at the top with a silly bow tie mm -hmm. also takes people to court occasionally. I can't remember the details exactly. <laughs> um, I would guess one of the other two, Cliff and Princess Michael, also takes people to court. It is incredible how wrong you can be. <laughs> um, it's uh, an excellent answer, and I'll give you a point, but it's not actually, it's not actually the answer we were looking for. The, uh, the answer is that it's Sir, Sir Ranulph Twistleton Wickham Fines because he, he's the only one not to have changed his name. Uh, really? In fact, it looks as if he's gradually added to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cliff Richard was originally called Harry Webb. Uh, Robert Maxwell was born Jan Hock, then took to calling himself Leslie Du Maurier. <laughs> <laughs> Princess Louis, uh, while Princess Michael of Kent used to be called Oberleutnant. No. <laughs> it's not far off. Baroness Marie Christine Agnes Hedwig Ida von Reibnitz is what she used to be called. Then before that, Marie Christine Trowbridge. Then before that, she was a Melbourne hairdresser called Christine Ribbonitz. And now she just plain old Princess Michael of Kent. <laughs> So there we are. You're still watching Have I Got News For You with me, Angus Titherington Shagnasty. <laughs> <laughs> As we glide effortlessly onto our props round, each team has to guess from its bizarre assembly of objets d'art which story we're attempting to encapsulate. Uh, Paul and Robert, you're first, so let me give you a, a Mars bar to do with as you will. Uh, pot of honey, do please tuck in. This is an egg timer, that's to time you See how long it takes you to eat all three Mars bars. And Roy Hatter's your final clue is another 17 Mars bars. <laughs> so what is that? Oh, here's the final one. Sorry, I didn't actually give it to you. <laughs> and that, in case you're wondering, is a bumblebee. 
Uh, so what is all that? <laughs> I don't Sorry. <laughs> it will stop eventually. In fact, uh, if you want to get it going again, if you just like to sort of hit it on the head with a hammer. <laughs> Hours of amusement. Yes. But what does it all mean? Uh, the amount of energy, according to Cambridge scientists, that a bee expends, uh, it would need um, a trillion miles per hour uh, an hour to, to make it do it if it was the size of a human being. Yes. Or, is that a like British that? scientific yes. discovery? Yes. I.e., is it wrong? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Angus, we can be more accurate for a bonus point. I think it's 30 miles per hour. And the point of the exercise was that bees, in terms of aerodynamic logic, shouldn't really be able to fly. <laughs> How can I possibly refuse? Yes, an extra point to the great and good Tony Slattery. Hurrah. Uh, yes, uh, just to summarise, it was Dr Charles Ellington of Cambridge University, after months of intensive research, you can be quiet, please, uh, finally proved that uh, the bumblebee cannot fly. That's official, apparently, so if you see one... <laughs> If you see one, you're clearly <laughs> mad. Uh, Ian and Tony, perhaps, uh, perhaps you'd like to inspect these. Uh, there's a rail timetable for you. Uh, uh, yes. An abacus. Right. An abacus. A dunce's hat. Ah. Oh, that's not a dunce's hat. This is, is formal wear for the Tory party conference on the hanging debate. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Very good. And we shall final, string them up. Your final clue is another... <laughs> 34 Mars bars. This year's rail guide is entirely full of mistakes. British Rail have had to issue an errata because there's so many mistakes in this year's guide. And they've worked out that it took British Rail scientists 30 Mars bars each <laughs> during their lunch hour <laughs> to completely get it wrong. To fly. Yeah. An extra point for pointing out that British Rail trains shouldn't be able to fly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll give a, an extra point to, uh, to Ian because he's, sort of, he's actually mentioned a news story that's uh, in the news this week, but it's not the right one. We're actually referring to uh, the survey by the Basic Skills Initiative organisation this week that showed that millions of people are baffled by simple mathematics. 30% couldn't figure out a railway timetable, 15% couldn't work out the cost of a dozen Mars bars, really? and the remaining... Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway... Uh, that's the end of the round, and uh, <laughs> Paul and Robert uh, have uh, 19, and Ian and Tony trail by seven points with 18. And so we enter our final missing words round, the quickfire round you've all come to know and hate, in which uh, each team is shown some headlines of the week, but with one or two words missing. Uh, the teams have to identify the missing words or provide a better alternative. As is traditional, the team currently bringing up the proverbial rear goes first. So, uh, Ian and Tony, to your marks, please. And your first one is... French teachers pop Kinnock's what? Hemorrhoid. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say that. No, no. Is it the obvious one? Uh, cork? Uh, it's simpler than that. It's simply Pop balloon. Balloon. Yes. Oh. oh, dear. Next one up is Mrs Thatcher urges more what in politics? More Mrs Thatcher in politics. <laughs> um, um, resignations? Uh, <laughs> it's not going well so far. Christianity is the right answer. Good grief. Uh, I don't ooh. believe that for a minute. Who would have thought? Next up, dangers of going what by Anne? British Rail. <laughs> No, danger, no, I know there's dangers, dangers of going green. Green, green, green. Yes, good, so excellent. Yes. And finally, Cecil's plan to get Britain what? Get Britain a very good transport system. <laughs> Pregnant. <laughs> In this party joke. Oh, no. no, I know, I know. I do know this one as well. This is, this is mo moving. It's moving. moving. It's moving. Well done. And uh, so it's on to Paul and Robert. Your turn. Amazing truth of Charles's what? Oh, operation. <laughs> this is they. Absolutely they, right. They um, they, they practised on a corpse. The yes. operation they did on him, and apparently the corpse is sitting up and taking light refreshment. <laughs> <laughs> and has been sent home, where it's expressed an interest in Emmerdell Farm. <laughs> Very good, but you're not getting any more points. Uh, Hattersley beaten on what is the next one? On oak table is what <laughs> Tony's going to say. <laughs> 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 
Uh, <laughs> proportional, <laughs> proportional representation? Mm, well, well, PR, yeah, almost PR. voting PR. Electoral reform. reform. Voting reforms, very yeah. good. Uh, next is Major Ron sells what for 5p? Crutchless knickers. <laughs> <laughs> next. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not quite right, no. And uh, daughter. An antiques. Antique. Antique. This is the uh, yeah. correct yeah. answer. Well done. And lastly, I made Thatcher what, boasts Nigel? <laughs> to swallow. <laughs> It's not a reference to food. <laughs> not Mars bars, then. Uh, it's, uh, Join. Win. <laughs> Look draw thin. A veil over this one. It's act. Oh. So, uh, at the end of that enthralling contest, uh, well, let's have a look. Ian and Tony have a modest 23, but Paul and Robert have an obscene 25. <laughs> well, it only remains for me to thank our plucky contestants, Ian Hislop and Tony Slattery, uh, Paul Merton and super sub Robert Harris. Uh, just time for me to pinpoint my favourite story of the week. National Grid this week have announced plans to light 1,200 homes a day using as fuel 15,000 tonnes of pig shit. <laughs> they were going to use bullshit, but there's been a bit of a run on it this week. <laughs> And finally, Neil Kinnock, denying splits in the Labour Party, set off this afternoon for a friendly meeting with Ken Livingstone. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Tomorrow night at 10, the boys are joined by comedian, author...